Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. So here is my review for Fear the Walking Dead Season 6, Episode 9, titled Things Left to Do. This episode absolutely blew me away. I do want to apologize for not posting it last night. I just never had the time to record this. There was a lot of stuff going on in the last few days. I actually got a new computer, so there was a lot of setting up with that. And with the microphone, I had some issues with that, with buzzing and stuff. And not only that, personally, a lot of things changed for me in the last week. And if you follow me on Instagram, you're likely going to know why. And it's that I found out that I most likely don't have the heart condition that I was worried about. There was a big miscommunication, and I'm actually going to talk about it on my personal channel. Because I, I keep privating videos on there. I do want to upload stuff on there more. And so I want to talk about what I've been going through for the last year or two on that channel because I've been feeling so much better. Like like the best way I can put it, which is going to sound really weird, but it's like I'm I'm in Minecraft uh, creative now. <laughs> like for the last year or two, I've been in survival. Things are just hard for, for no reason. And now I, I feel like I'm just in this like creative mode where anything is possible. And I'm so excited. Like I, I really don't want to take a pause from doing videos like I have. The last two weeks, I've missed a lot. I uploaded last Sunday, and that was it. I really don't want that to happen again. And I, I really do appreciate the fact that you guys have been very patient with me because the last year or two, I've had these little like bouts of that. Like I've had these little periods where I wouldn't upload for about a few weeks, and then I would start uploading again, then I would go off of it again. And it's yeah. Anyways, I'll, I'll stop rambling here because you guys came here for a Fear the Walking Dead review, but I just wanted to put that out there. I will talk about it more in depth in a personal video that I will post on my personal channel, which is just titled Forest, I believe. Also, my commentary track for tonight's episode or last night's episode is up on the channel now for members only. I was not expecting what we got in tonight's episode, so yeah, that just absolutely blew me away. This episode was for sure better than episode 8, but I would say the best of, I guess the best Fear the Walking Dead episode I've seen in recent years. And one last thing, we will be doing a members only live stream later on tonight, or not tonight, it'll be more in the evening, but 9 o'clock Eastern, around there, around the time when Fear the Walking Dead would usually air. So I'm not sure where you guys are located, but it'll be around 9 o'clock Eastern. And that's going to be for members only, and don't worry, I'm going to be leaving the live stream up. So if you are in the UK and you're at it's like three in the morning over there or four or five or whatever time it ends up being over there, you'll be able to check out the live stream the next day because, yeah, it makes sense for me to, to leave the live streams up for members. But anyways, let's talk about this. This episode, this is the episode I think now that has just it's officially sold me on Fear the Walking Dead is good now. It's just as simple as that. Right, because in the first half of it, you could say, well, it's kind of a fluke. They just had a few things here, here and there. We'll see where this goes. Well, this was the resolution to that big storyline. Tonight's episode actually resolved everything that we've been working towards for the last year or two. And I would say it did it brilliantly. It felt like a finale. This episode somehow, it felt like a finale, but it also set up new things. And you can tell we're like in mid-season too, because, well, mostly just that last shot of June there. You can tell like there's more to come here in this episode. It's not exactly like a finale, but the, the result of the Virginia and Pioneer storyline it's now at its conclusion, and I think they did a great job at this. Last Sunday's episode was also great. John's performance, or not John, but Gareth Dillahunt, I believe his name is. His performance as John, absolutely what happened in the episode, for sure. It set up this episode nicely. I still don't get the whole Dakota thing. Definitely the whole Dakota aspect to this is still... I don't get why she killed John. That's the only thing there. Like, I get the end game. I get why all this happened now. It, it definitely, the fact that June just killed Virginia, I, I get that. I get why she would do that. And what what's that going to do now to everyone else? Virginia also knowing the truth more, I guess, about what happened to, uh, for, to Janice and stuff. And all of that makes a lot of sense. But it just makes no sense as to why Dakota killed John because she didn't have to. Like, what was she worried about, right? She, like, I just I don't get that part of it. And so right there, that's a big flaw to me personally. But regardless, I think what it did set up, like if you just overlooked that one part of it, everything concluded very nicely. And this episode revolved all around Virginia and Morgan. I also want to say, I think this episode completely solidified the fact that Morgan is now the new Rick Grimes, at least for this show. This is Morgan's show now. And for the Daryl and Carol spinoff, if they want to have a lot of success, I think they got to look at Fear the Walking Dead, which I can't believe they're saying that. But look at what they've been doing right this season. There, there are there are main characters like Alicia, Luciana, Strand, and etc. But we don't see them all the time. 
I think they got to do the same thing. They got to introduce a bunch of new characters and write it in a way where it matters this much. And I, I think a lot of it has to do with performance too. And I think a lot of it is specifically the Morgan character because he's such a great character. He's one of my favorite characters in, in this Walking Dead universe. He has a lot of range. He has a lot of things he can do. You can see him very vulnerable. He, he's just like Rick. He, you know, like both of those characters have a lot of range. They can be very happy, angry, pissed off, sad, all of that. They, they can really do everything. Carol could also play into that too. Carol can be there a little bit. I would say Daryl can't. They could if they wanted to do something with the character, but a lot of times if he's happy, he's not too happy. He's just kind of, you know, I can picture Norman Reed as happy, but when I think of Daryl, he has the same expression. He's just kind of grunting all the time, right? If he's sad, it's the same thing. Like, he'll cry maybe sometimes, but there's not a lot of emotion out of the character. With Morgan, there is that. He's a he's a great character to do a spinoff on. I'm not saying Daryl's not. I don't think he's as great as Morgan. There's, there's definitely some potential there that you can, you know, there's a way to make that work. I just think they have to look at Fear the Walking Dead and what they've done so successfully this season. We pick up in this episode with Virginia and June, and June is still shocked about what happened to John and... She's burying him, and I guess that I guess technically tonight's episode was the last for Gareth Dillon Hunt uh, as John. He was playing a body, but still. And the whole thing quickly became a shit show. I mean, I can't believe how much they fit into this episode. Virginia has all of those people lined up in a, like a eeny meeny miny mo Lucille fashion, and she wants Morgan to come. And I wasn't expecting Morgan to actually be there when I when he came up. I was like, holy shit, okay, they're, they're doing this. Morgan was there. Morgan gives a Rick Grimes-like speech. You can tell he was inspired by Rick. Like, you can tell when he's emoting there, he's, he's given that speech. And he is right. He does this more than once. He does it later on when he's put to the task of executing Virginia. He doesn't want to, and I think he, he thinks about what, what Rick said in the episode titled Wrath, I believe, which is the season 8 finale, when Rick wanted to keep Negan alive because it sends a message, and this isn't the way we want to start off everything. We want to build for the future. We want, you know, it's pretty hilarious, but all of this, this type of way to live, this all started because they killed Carl off because for some reason, Carl became a prophet. Like I've always used to say, like he was like this dumb kid who didn't really know what to do. And then out of nowhere in his last, last few episodes on the show, he became all wise and whatever, but that, that was a writing issue then, but it's obviously really benefited the show a lot since. But I do like Morgan's reasoning here. It, it makes so much sense to do that, to, to keep Virginia here. It's a symbol. And when he put that axe into the ground, he said, hopefully I don't have to pick this up anytime soon. This here, it, it's, it's a symbol. Everyone had a bunch of issues with it. Strand had a ton of issues with it. Sherry as well. And that's the thing I would say about those two characters. Like, they are kind of doing their own thing. Strand now, he has completely abandoned the ways of Virginia. He's been working behind Virginia's back, I guess, to become the leader now of the Rangers to completely double cross her. And it worked, but obviously Strand is going to do what Strand normally does, which is he works for himself. And I still like the character. I do. I've always liked the character since season one, but I am more on Morgan's side. I just am. And it's not just because he's Morgan. Like, there's a part of that, but it's mostly because I think Morgan is right here. Strand was kind of pissing me off in the end. Like, he wanted to kill Virginia, but Daniel and Gracie were still held captive, so could you just wait? <laughs> like, Sherry is... I don't understand the last scene there at the end. I don't get why they've worked up to this for so long. I do like the fact that it is different. It wasn't just like... They got together and now they're apart. So they're doing that. that. That is kind of typical writing still. But at least for the last few episodes, you kind of saw what Sherry was thinking. And, and I, I do like it. I, I think Sherry is pretty crazy, though. And that's a comic thing, because in the comic, Sherry was nuts. And I mean, she was crazy. She, she tried to kill Rick. Things got pretty nuts there. I can definitely see Sherry being killed off in the future. And then something happening where Dwight's going to question Morgan. Like, I can actually see them borrowing that moment from the comic. And using that on Fear the Walking Dead because Dwight's there, Sherry's there. Just put Morgan in Rick's place, right? Sherry tries to kill Morgan for some weird reason in the future. Morgan doesn't actually kill Sherry, or maybe he does in self-defense, but the way Sherry dies in the comic is the chair kind of moves backwards or something. She, she snaps her neck by accident, and Rick says it was an accident, but Dwight doesn't believe her, and a bunch of shit starts there. I can see that here happening with Morgan, Dwight, and Sherry for sure. But this was the whole episode. Everyone was trying to get Virginia, and we went through all these different things where Sherry was chasing Morgan down, etc. It got to the final moment here where, first of all, we did learn that Dakota and Virginia are daughter and mother, not sisters. I wasn't expecting that. That completely floored me. I, I couldn't believe that. Yeah, that that's so obvious. I was always wondering about the age difference, but then again, you think of Andrea and her sister Amy, there was about a 20-year age difference, right? The same thing here, you know, like, 
people have kids when they're teenagers sometimes, you know, it, it does happen. I mean, I'm sure I'm not the only one where in high school, you just kept hearing about all your friends or people around you. You're like, oh, this person's pregnant. This person's like, Jesus Christ, everyone's getting pregnant. So it happens. And I guess Dakota didn't know. So Dakota had a little moment there where she learned that. And it seemed like everything was nicely resolving because everyone left to go do their own thing. They were okay with Virginia staying alive, but they were going to send Dakota and Virginia away. And Virginia actually seemed like she was okay with it. And that's the thing. I did feel bad for her. There were a lot of moments in this episode where I was just like, you know what? She was just drunk on power. That, that's all that happened to her. She's done some terrible things. But I agree with Morgan just sending her away. I, I do. I think that's the right decision. And they almost got to that moment. But then June shows up and then just kills Virginia. Now, what does that do to Dakota? Right? Like, what is she going to do now? Because now she knows that June just killed my mom. But then again, Dakota, you killed June's husband. So technically, you guys are even now. But is Dakota going to feel like that? I don't know. And I still don't like the character. I don't because she killed John. But Virginia did say to Morgan in this episode that, you know, I'm going to die, but you got to keep uh, Dakota alive. Like, you got to let her live here. And so now I'm worried that that's exactly what they're going to do is they're going to keep Dakota here in this community. And I don't want that because I don't like the character. And this is Charlie all over again. I will never like the Dakota character. There's just no way unless there's some genius way to write that. I, I don't see it. She killed John and for no stupid reason. Like with Charlie and Nick, you could at least say Charlie was just very young, very, very young and scared. Like, I, I could see that. that like, her, like when you're a kid, you do stupid things. You're not thinking straight. And Dakota... You know, she's a, she's a older. John wasn't going to do anything to her or to her for her chances of survival or anything. There was nothing there. There was no reason for her to do that. I'll never accept her as a character. So don't make her a part of the community. I imagine she will be for the next few episodes. But I, I hope that I don't know if she's going to die at some point, hopefully. Or I hope they just do something where they write her off or she ends up just leaving or something like that. Because, yeah, I don't know. It depends. Like, why would you write the character into the show, right? Like, she could be a season six thing, but I have a bad feeling that she's going to be around for quite a while. But, yeah, overall, tonight's episode was just great. This episode absolutely blew me away. I was not expecting this episode to be as good as it was. The Virginia and Pioneer arc is over now. And now we move on to the, we are at the end of the, as the beginning group. What's their whole thing and how is that going to threaten, I guess, Morgan's new community here? It needs a name. It really needs a, a name. They did a really great job. The show is brilliant, I would say, in the way it told this new story and how they changed how bad season five was. Because they set up Virginia and all that in season five when the show was completely terrible. It was horrible. They somehow recontextualized a lot of things and they changed the path of where they were going. And I would say, Fear the Walking Dead right now is like an 8 or 9 out of 10 show. It is so good. And if they want to get to that point where it is just, holy shit, stunning, amazing, like, uh, mind-blowing, you got to bring Madison back. But that's where, like, if, if the end is the beginning thing, is if that's building up to that in some way, shape, or form, or in, you know what I mean? That is where it is, things are going to get so good. And don't even do it in Season 6. Honestly, the show is so good right now, I'm enjoying it build up to it and then in season seven make that the reveal anyways this is my review for tonight's episode i i enjoyed it i can't wait for episode 10 next week and all my videos will be on time now i promise so post all your thoughts down below hope you guys all enjoyed the video and i'll see you guys in the next one Bye.